Hey there, Dave here. It has been an insane few weeks in the stock market. The other day, I retweeted this. This is pretty much exactly how my portfolio has performed in 2020. Everything on fire. Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, my S&P ETF. Everything's going up, up, up. Until it wasn't. <laughs> And then, this is about when I went on vacation, things started deteriorating, I wasn't panicked, I'm a buy and hold investor, it's all gonna recover, right? It always does. Uh, the experts say the best time to invest is the present, you can't time the market, maybe I should buy this dip, right? Or no. Wait, this is getting uncomfortable. Should I panic? Should I sell everything? But I really like the stuff I'm invested in, I don't wanna pay taxes on my gains, but if I don't do something, there might not be any gains. And, this is where I was able to pause the stock market. And it's a good thing I did because that represents the worst week in the stock market in over a decade. So would you like to know how I was able to pause the stock market, how I avoided disastrous losses in my account without selling any of my investments and in a way that I will still be able to profit when things recover? If that sounds interesting to you, now is the perfect time to smash that like button, leave me a quick comment to let the YouTube algorithm know that this video would be great to show to everyone. If you're new here, my name is Dave Hansen. I'm basically a financial minimalist, but one who likes to find ways to maximize how my money works for me with the least possible amount of time or effort. I basically retired in my 30s. Now I focus full time on investing in the stock market and in private companies. I have another YouTube channel all about that with my friends. It's called Dumb Money. Check it out. I love making these videos. I think it's a fun way to help teach people ways of thinking, things that have worked well for me. And if that sounds interesting, I'd love to have you come back for every single video. Subscribing, turning on those notifications, a great way to do that. It's my free gift to you. We all just lived through the stock market's worst week in over a decade, and then the biggest single day gain for the Dow Jones in history. Then we were down again, and then the Fed did an emergency rate cut to bring us back up, which then made people nervous that maybe the Fed knows more than we do, and it's worse than we think. And so we went back down, and then after that we went back up. Can somebody please stop this crazy roller coaster? And that is where my pause button comes to the rescue. I didn't invent this concept, but I might be the first person to call it a pause button. And that's exactly how I think about it. By the way, I'm not a financial advisor or in any way qualified to give you financial advice. I'm just a guy on the internet. What I'm about to tell you about has worked for me, but it is not suitable for everyone. You should always do your own research. Investing has risks. You get the idea. I am not one to panic sell. I may have been when I was new to investing, but these days, if anything, I know that there are companies that I would love to buy when they're on sale at lower prices like this. So I just hit the pause button. It's actually better than a pause button. Maybe it's more like an auto automatic skip button because when the markets turned around and started going up, I didn't miss out on those prices going up like I would have if I had sold everything. I just got back in town last night from a two week vacation and I edited and posted my last video from there. And in that video, I committed to making a new video for you guys every other Thursday, but this was just too important and I couldn't wait. I have even more respect now for YouTubers that make multiple videos every week or, or every day. You guys are legit. I'm filming this on Thursday morning and I'm gonna edit and hopefully get it out to you maybe Friday. I don't even know. I was able to press my so-called pause button from my phone from a remote part of Baja, Mexico where I barely had internet, but I knew I needed to do something. Full disclosure, my portfolio was down a half million dollars at that point and I have not recovered from that, but it could have been way worse. So how does my pause button work? It works basically like an insurance policy. Let's think for a minute about how car insurance works because it's actually pretty similar. With car insurance, you pay a premium every month and you hope that you never have to actually use it. If you do wreck your car, the insurance kicks in, you pay a deductible and the insurance pays for the rest. That premium that you pay is money that you'll never get back if you don't wreck your car. But if your car is totaled, you'll probably get a check worth more than the total of all of those premiums that you paid over time. My insurance policy for the stock market is using the options market. Wait, what? You've probably heard of options. Maybe you've even looked at quotes for options in your brokerage account. You might have even been given stock options by your employer. If you are familiar with options, hopefully you'll still find this video informative, but I'm gonna start with a quick lesson for everyone who doesn't know how they work. If you do, you can skip ahead to this time. And for the rest of us, I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Your online broker will have tons of info if you wanna learn more, but this is my one sentence option lesson. Options are a contract that lets you buy or sell a specific stock at an agreed upon price by a specific date. 
Okay, we'll break it down a little bit more. A contract is just what it sounds like. It's an agreement, it's a legally binding right for you to be able to buy or sell something. I said a specific stock, but really it could be any asset. In my case, we're gonna be talking about using an ETF or an exchange traded fund. And I said it lets you buy or sell. Specifically, that is the right to buy or sell and not the obligation. You don't actually have to act upon this contractual right that you're buying. That right to buy is called a call and that right to sell is called a put. That agreed upon price is referred to as the strike price and the specific date is known as the expiration date. That's the terminology, but it really makes it sound way more complicated than it is. The simplified way of saying how my pause button works, if the stock market goes down, I wanna be able to sell at today's price instead of this lower price after it went down. And to be able to have that right, I actually have to buy a contract. The amount I pay for that contract is called the premium, just like the premiums you pay for car insurance. These contracts are a little different though. They trade like stocks. They have their own stock market actually. Uh, the Chicago Board Options Exchange is the biggest. It's been around since before I was born. Someday, maybe I'll make a video about how I used options before I had any money and was able to afford stocks. Let's talk about a specific example of how I used options as a pause button or an insurance policy for my portfolio. And this is just an example. My investments are gonna be very different than yours, so don't just try to copy what I do. But this is to help you think about what might work for your specific situation. My portfolio looks a lot like the S&P 500. My biggest stock investments are in Amazon, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. What are the biggest components of the S&P 500 index? Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon. I'm also invested in an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 to give me exposure to all those other companies in the index that I don't own directly. You could say I'm a pretty big fan of investing in ETFs, and if you look at the long-term track record, I've done pretty well. Five years, two years, even one year. But if you look at this month, Ouch. So for me, being able to sell the S&P index at today's price would essentially lock in the current dollar value of my portfolio. If the price of the S&P goes down, I would still be able to sell at today's higher price. And if the price of the S&P goes up, the ETF I own and probably most of my stocks would have also gone up. Win-win, right? You can't lose. <laughs> Not so fast. I always joke that the one way to make sure that the market goes back up is for me to buy insurance puts. If the market goes down, your put option value goes up. And if you've bought enough of those contracts to cover your entire portfolio, your total account balance, theoretically, if everything was perfectly aligned, would essentially remain unchanged. Perfect, you've paused the market. But if the market goes up, the value of your put options would go down. And as the contract's expiration date gets closer, the value of those put options would eventually be worth nothing. That's the biggest risk with options. You lose the entire premium. Kind of like the car insurance premiums you pay, if you don't actually wreck your car, those premiums are worthless. With options, that premium can get very expensive. The larger the portfolio that you're trying to insure, the more expensive that pause button gets. Insuring a brand new Lamborghini is gonna be more expensive than insuring a 1992 Nissan. Unlike car insurance, I do not always have insurance on my portfolio. It would be way too expensive and really not make any sense. And that is how, when the market started going down, I lost a half million dollars before I hit the pause button. So how expensive is it? Let's do some quick math. Using today's quotes, it is 11.10 a.m. Eastern time and the S&P 500 index is down 1.98%. To make our math easy, we're gonna say you have a $100,000 portfolio and you're invested in an S&P 500 ETF like VOO from Vanguard. This market is moving so fast it might be hard to demonstrate, but who said investing is easy, right? I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. Okay, so the VOO is trading at $282.30 and the S&P is only down 1.88% now. So in our theoretical portfolio, we're gonna say you have 355 shares of VOO and that's worth $100,216.00. 50 cents. To ensure that $100,000, we're gonna have to buy put option contracts that represent $100,000 of the underlying asset, or the VOO. For S&P puts, I actually like using SPY better than VOO. They both are ETFs that track the same S&P 500 index. I like owning the Vanguard version because it has a lower expense ratio than the SPY from State Street Global, but options for the SPY have more volume than VOO, so I like using SPY for the options. Theoretically, they should do the exact same thing. So SPY SPY is trading at 307.79 and the S&P is now down 1.66%. So how many SPY contracts do you need? Let's take our theoretical account balance and divide that by the current price of the SPY, 307.79, which gives us about 325 shares. Fun fact, an option contract usually represents 100 shares of the underlying asset. Now there are some non-standard options, so always confirm that, but this means instead of buying 325 options, we'd actually only need to buy 3.25 and you can't 
can actually buy fractional options, so we're going to go with three option contracts. If we click to look at option quotes, this is where it could get confusing. I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible. Two things, we need to decide the strike price we're interested in and what expiration date we want. The strike price isn't too difficult, you just need to decide how much you're comfortable losing before the insurance kicks in. Basically, if you wanna have insurance at the current value, you have to pick a price in this blue shaded area. That's called being in the money. Premiums are always going to be higher when you're buying in the money options. The amount you pay is here in the ask column. So with the SPY at $307.52 and in the money put with a $308 strike price would cost $9.13. That sounds affordable, right? Again, not so fast. The contract represents 100 shares, so you're actually going to be paying $913 per contract. That's not terrible, but three of those will cost you $2,739, and that should kick in immediately if the S&P were to go down from here, and it would essentially lock in your portfolio so that it won't fluctuate much below $100,000. Once you try to insure a larger portfolio, this gets expensive very quickly, so I like to think of it more as true insurance rather than speculating that the market's going to go down, so I look a little out of the money. Let's say I wanted to protect my portfolio if the S&P happened to go down an additional 3%. That would be 3% of the underlying $307.52. So that means a strike price of around $298. So expanding out to look at the 298 strike price puts, they're going for $6.50, which is $650 since they represent 100 shares. Call me old fashioned, but I like to use options that are in multiples of five. So I'd actually be looking at the 300s and those are asking 707. And as you can see the volume here, I'm not alone in picking the 300s, way more volume on those, which can help ensure that the spread between the bid and the ask is more reasonable. And there's a better chance that someone will want to buy these when you're ready to sell. So at $707 per contract, three of those will cost $2,121 that's the insurance. So with today's theoretical $100,000 account, which because the market's moving so fast today would have already dropped down to $99,857.95, just in the time it took me to explain the process. But if it were to drop another 3%, the value of the options theoretically would prevent the account from losing more than 3%, essentially pausing the market and preventing further losses. But if the market were to shoot up or even stay the same by that expiration date, remember, if the strike price is out of the money, the premium value the option will decrease over time and eventually end at zero when the contract expires, which is where the expiration date comes into play. We are looking at the March 20th options here. Those are the next monthly options. Most options have a monthly version that expire on the third Friday of the month, but a bunch, including SPY, also have weekly options. You can buy options on the SPY that expire on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Why might you want to do that? Well, right now I personally have the March 20th monthly put options just as insurance in case the market goes down, but over the past few weeks, one of my biggest concerns is that there might be some news story that comes out over the weekend that completely freaks the market out. A lot can happen while the markets are closed over the weekend. We've seen some of our biggest drops and gains on Mondays. I'm cool with the gains, but wouldn't it be nice to have a little insurance over the weekend? Generally, because the expiration date is so close, the option cost is fairly low because there's a very good chance that they're going to expire worthless. Right now, for example, it's Thursday. The 295 puts on the SPY, which are about 3% out of the money and expire on Monday, just four days from now. They're asking 243, so for under $750, we could insure our theoretical $100,000 portfolio in the event of some major news story that makes the bottom fall out of this market. But what if the market shoots up 5% on Monday? No problem. We've lost the $750 premium for insurance, but we still had our portfolio value go up 5% or $5,000. So net net, we're still up $4,250. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. As I often say, I'm just a guy on the internet. Options have risk. The biggest being that you can lose the entire premium that you pay. Your online broker probably has $0 trading for options, although some still charge a per contract fee. So be aware of that. Before they'll let you trade options, you're going to need to to read through all of their disclosures about risks. Options can get very complicated. They have ridiculous names like the iron condor spread or steel butterflies or some nonsense like that. Like always, I like to keep things simple and the simple way I protected my portfolio was simply buying puts on the SPY. As always, if you've made it this far, I think I've really earned that thumbs up. If you liked this and you're willing to help me get my videos out to more people, I do have one thing to ask. It's something new I wanna try and it might take a little time, but really it's just a click and then you can continue on with your day. If you can, this is a playlist with three videos in it. I would really appreciate it if you would click and watch these all the way through. This is something I've wanted to try for the YouTube algorithm and I need your help. 
And until we meet again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Dave Hansen.